Okay. Good afternoon. I am calling the Assembly Education Committee to order. Will the secretary please call the roll? Oh, we're going to start as a subcommittee. Actually, we're going to start as a subcommittee. I apologize. Uh, thank you. Um, and just a piece of information here. We have 31 bills on file today. We have a busy day. I just would appreciate if everybody could be uh, as efficient as possible to convey their message to the committee. And remember, we have two speakers, two minutes, and then we go to the public. Um, so again, we have 31 on file, 31 bills on file today. Ten of them are on consent, and four have been pulled. Uh, the bills on consent are as follows. AB 1593, AB 1850, AB 2063, AB 2116, AB 2122, AB 2259, AB 2401, AB 2519, AB 2489, AB 2537. Those bills, again, are on consent. The bills that have been pulled and will not be heard today are as follows. AB 1682, AB 1935, AB 2072, AB 2806. Those bills, again, have been pulled. Uh, that leaves 17 bills to be heard. And again, due to the length of today's agenda, we will allow two witnesses per side to testify on each bill, and each witness will have two minutes. After the witnesses, all others in support and opposition may raise their name and affiliation and position at the microphone. With that, we are ready for our first author, uh, and that is Mr. Rodriguez. That is file item number five, file item number five, AB 1719. Mr. Rodriguez, you may proceed when ready. Why don't we wait one minute till everybody gets settled, Mr. Rodriguez? So today we're voting on the bill as amended. That's right. And I just have him clarify that? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. at some point? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, when we need Thank the you. motion. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, you may proceed. Skills needed to increase the chance of survival for cardiac arrest victims. This measure holds the power to create generations of lifesavers. With me here today is Debbie Wilson, who will share the story of her daughter, Morgan Wilson. Also here to testify is Deputy Chief Melanie Brandon of the San Francisco Fire Department. Your first witness in support. You may proceed. Thank you for the opportunity for me to testify today, as I did last year uh, at this time. My name is Debbie Wilson. My daughter was Morgan Wilson. She would have been a college freshman this year. Unfortunately, she didn't get the opportunity. On July 8th, 2014, she collapsed of a sudden cardiac arrest. My amazing daughter, um, my athlete, my honor student, um, was pronounced brain dead eight days later and died from lack of oxygen to her brain and blood circulation. Morgan didn't have to die. 
She was at a tennis camp, and she ran a lap, and she collapsed. She was rushed to the hospital, and every doctor in that hospital could not believe that someone did not do CPR on her. They watched because they didn't know what to do. There were several athletes around her, student athletes at the time. I have nightmares daily, and I just cannot believe that someone would watch, but again, not know what to do. Um, I'm here as a mom. I'm here as, uh, for Morgan, I'm here to save lives. Uh, please um, pass this bill. I, I really think that um, we could do a lot of good with it. Um, kids want to learn CPR. We've started a foundation, the Learn From Oregon Foundation. Uh, we worked with Placentia Yorba Linda School District and the Anaheim Union School District. They are both teaching hands-on CPR as curriculum in their health class now. Uh, we didn't change the curriculum, we just added the hands-on portion, which takes about 30 extra minutes. Uh, the Learn from Oregon Foundation also worked with the school district to um, uh, supply money and purchase the mannequins um, needed to be able for the kids to do the hands-on portion. Sudden cardiac arrest can happen to anyone. Anyone. It could happen to your kids. It could happen to you. I think the amazing part of what we're trying to do is think of how many lifesavers we will have walking around if we get this bill passed. My child is worth everything. I know your families are worth everything for something so simple to do that is so easy to teach. To save a life, I plead for your I vote. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for uh, sharing your story. And I, I, mean, I know I speak for the entire committee when we offer our condolences. And, and also thank you for turning this into to action to make change. Thank so you. Thank you. Your next witness. Establish a quorum before that. Yeah. You know, let, let me just take one break, one moment, if you would, to the witnesses. We're going to establish a quorum. If the secretary, please call the roll. O'Donnell. Here. Olson. Kim. Here. McCarty. Santiago, Here. Thurmond, Weber. Here. We got a quorum. Yes. A quorum has been established. Thank you. And the next witness may proceed. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm. Um, my name is. A little Melanie. louder. A little closer okay. to the microphone, maybe. Sorry. Thank you. Just because the door's opening and there's a lot of noise in here today. Okay. No problem. Uh, my name is Melanie Brandon. Uh, I'm the EMS training chief uh, for the San Francisco Fire Department. I'm also the Fire Department's uh, American Heart Association Training Center Coordinator and regional faculty in, in CPR and PALS and ACLS. Um, and I've been the lead uh, with our Fire Department's partnership with the San Francisco Unified School District uh, with, with the, high, the CPR and the high schools program there. Uh, excuse me. In 2015, the San Francisco Unified School District partnered with our department and agreed to offer hands-only CPR training to students starting with ninth graders uh, for three years. It's a three-year program so far. Um, hands-only CPR uh, is simply the chest compressions needed to circulate uh, oxygenated, oxygenated blood from the victim's lungs into the brain after a person collapses and to keep them viable until first responders arrive. It's the first link in the chain of survival for, for the victim. Uh, there is no certification offered with this program um, since we don't go the whole, through the full course of rescue breathing, um, checking for the pulse, and other components. Uh, the department plans to train approximately 4,800 uh, ninth graders at 22 of our public high schools in San Francisco. In addition to teaching students, we provide instruction to the teachers on how to present the hands-only CPR. We're actually using our mannequins, but we're looking at grants to have mannequins uh, distributed to all the high schools so they have their own cache of, of uh, training equipment. Um, the, um, the instruction is conducted during their health class um, and lasts about 50 minutes um, uh, but the training could actually be done in about 30 minutes. Uh, we work with the school district on scheduling the instruction and provide each student with their own mannequin. 
And, um, but keep in mind that this is only for the hands-only CPR. And that's the beauty of hands-only CPR. Anyone can teach it. You don't have to be certified, and it's so easy to learn. Um, the instruction consists of um, American Heart Association Stay in Alive video tutorial, um, a, the PowerPoint presentation, which actually um, demonstrates and, and discusses cardiac arrest and the steps of hands-only CPR. Um, we go over choking, we go over use of the AED, and we actually we go over being heart healthy, and we actually have them practice and then we test them for five minutes, uh, so that would be the time that it would take first responders to, to get to the to victims. So years later, they remember in high school they were doing compressions on the floor for about five minutes, and that stays in their, in their head. They never forget it, it's so easy. Um, we applaud the bill's flexibility in allowing schools to partner with organizations such as EMS, Thank you, hospitals. if you could sum up, please. Okay. Uh, with the fire department and myself, we, we uh, um, urge you for an I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, witnesses in support, if you could just state your name, affiliation, and position on the bill only, please. Sean Henschel on behalf of American Medical Response, strong support. Thank you. Erica Hoffman with the California School Boards Association and with the amendments taken today, we are proud to uh, support the bill. Thank you. Lydia Wuhan representing American Academy of Pediatrics as well as the California School Nurses, we are in support. Jennifer Tannehill on behalf of the California Society for Respiratory Care in support. Kula Koenig with the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, proud to co-sponsor this bill. Sue Parker through the Learn from Oregon Foundation. I saved my daughter's life to CPR. Christy Woods with the American Red Cross, co-sponsor of this bill, and we encourage your support. Isabel Garcia with the California Teachers Association. We're a tweener. We don't have a formal position yet. We're taking, we're going to council, but we wanted to thank the author for working with us and the committee staff on the liability issues that we have, the concerns we have with the bill. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any witnesses in opposition? Seeing no witnesses in opposition, any questions from the committee or any comments? Uh, I'll just make one. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, thank you for bringing your own personal experience as a first responder to this room today and the others, your experience and um, your desire to do something positive. Thank you. Um, any comments from the committee? Yes, I would See? like to uh, thank the author for bringing this forward and I would like to thank the, um, the witnesses also. And uh, I want to Thank you again uh, for sharing uh, Morgan's story. From a mother's perspective, it's so important that your Morgan uh, should not have lost if uh, there was opportunity to conduct CPR when she needed that critical few moments of time. As a mother who raised a child who went through a similar situation, who also struggled a lot through uh, about six or eight years of her uh, time when she was struggling with uh, my daughter had two open brain surgeries, so you can see. And she's, whenever she was a playing soccer, she was a very good soccer player, by the way, but her medical condition wouldn't allow her because oftentimes she will uh, struggle with a situation that just doesn't allow her to do so. Uh, that was an experience for me, and I personally took it upon myself to also be trained, just in case something happens uh, to someone like my daughter and to others. Um, so I would be CPR trained. So I do have CPR training, and I try to um, recertify myself every two or three years that is required to do so. Now, this is a very, very sensible legislation, and I remember voting for it last year, and uh, I'm so glad that. Uh, you brought this back this year. I asked to uh, be co-author on your legislation, and if there is an opportunity, I would still like to be listed as a co-author on your legislation. And uh, the flexibility to partner with local foundations like yours, uh, Morgan Foundation, and the flexibility to also partner with local EMS, I think it's, again, uh, we need to do more, especially during high school years when we have a lot of student athletes um, playing sports and anything could happen. And if teammates, the teachers, the coaches, if they are fully trained and not be so nervous about what to do when you see somebody who needs help, 
I mean, even for those of us who were CPR trained, we oftentimes find ourselves at a loss because we see somebody totally almost lifeless and I don't know what to do. So again, it really needs to be certified. It needs to be retrained. Um, but again, this doesn't need certification per your legislation. But again, if we can do this at a high school level and have one of your peers to know what to do. I think we can save a lot of lives and uh, we can save Morgan's life or could have. And um, my daughter's life was saved thanks to many who really looked after her. She had friends who played soccer and baseball and softball with her and kept an eye on her um, every moment. And she would, the friends would come and tell me, okay, she had another grand mal seizure or things like that. And so I really feel for you, and again, from a mother's perspective, having lost uh, your daughter's life like that, I think it's unconscionable why we wouldn't do this. So I'm very much in support of this legislation, and I would like uh, my colleagues to also take that into consideration, and I ask for your I vote too. Thank you. So th is that a motion, Ms. Kim? Yes. Okay, we, we, we do have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Uh, you may close, Mr. Rodriguez. Well, members, I respectfully ask for I vote, and, and somebody member Kim, I'll have my staff follow up with yours on your request as well. So with that, I respectfully ask for I vote. Thank you. Uh, Madam Secretary, you may call the roll. We don't have a quorum. Well, we do, we do not have a quorum. Yeah, we do. We, we, we do? We didn't okay, we do have a quorum. I apologize. We do. There's not one right now. We can vote though now. We can still vote. Please call the roll. O'Donnell? Aye. O'Donnell, aye. Olson? Kim? Aye. Kim, aye. McCarty? Santiago? Thurmond? Weber? Aye. Weber, aye. And the motion was due pass as amended to the Judiciary Committee. So it's going, to have, it's going to stop at another committee before it goes to the full body. Actually, another two probably. But just so you know, there are members who aren't here. They're going to come in later, and I'm quite confident they'll be supportive. So again, thank you for coming here today. The bill is on call. Okay, we're going to the next move to uh, AB 1876. That's file item number eight. You may proceed, Ms. Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Today, I please present a AB 1876, which will expand the language of the GD is offered into the top five primary language in California. The exam currently offered in English, Spanish, and available in French. As well as know, there are are over 10 million immigrants in our state who came from different backgrounds and speaking their own language. Immigrants come to the California seeking out to better life in their families. Being available to take the GD in their language will be help them complete the job market that many of, of them better pay. AB 1876 it will be allowing individuals to take that exam in the language of their choice to prepare that have the skill that a second in California. With me, I have the witness from LCIU in support. Thank you, committee members. My name is Chauncey Smith, legislative advocate, American Civil Liberties Union of California, here today in strong support of AB 1876 which aims to improve access to GEDs for California's uh, hugely diverse population. Currently, California has an estimated population of 10 million immigrants. Approximately 44% of the California population speaks a language other than English at home. Currently, however, the GED is only provided in two languages, English and Spanish. This restricted approach to providing the GED inhibits access to California's 
hugely diverse population, particularly the uh, Asian and Southeast Asian communities, um, because Chinese, Tagalog, and Vietnamese are the three next most spoken languages in our state. With GEDs and the opportunity to obtain them, California's people will be better able to obtain employment, pursue college, and have better life opportunities. For these reasons, the ACLU of California strongly supports AB 1876, and we respectfully request your yes vote. Thank you. Uh, other witnesses in support? Good afternoon, Martha Zaragoza, representing the California Association for Bilingual Education and Californians Together, and we support the bill for all the reasons given by the sponsor. Thank you. Tanya Zaccone, California Language Teachers Association in support. Thank you. Any witnesses in opposition? Seeing none, I do have a question, Ms. Lopez. Maybe you can answer this. Uh, you know, the, why I struggle with this is the cost implications, not so much on the state but to the student. Mm -hmm. The cost associated with developing these students, with developing these tests for these students would be significant and the students would be paying to take the test, correct? So, you know, you might, either you would spread the cost over all tests or you might just spread it, or you might just hold it to one type of test. And I just wonder what the implications of that might be on the student. Do you, do you have any comment on that or thoughts? Um, I believe we we can spread the cost to all the language and all the students and um, and especially in my community I see that will benefit for the community and they're happy to you know take the increase because at the end of the day you know if they get a good um, paid job you know they will benefit for that it's not so much the cost okay again I, I just struggle if we do spread it across all students then it, it raises every student's GED fees and maybe that's a good thing maybe it's not it's just you know a point where I struggle with this whole concept um, and I you know I share your desire for people to have access to GEDs and beyond yeah so I mean your cause is noble here just 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 I want you to understand that yeah. great thank you um, do we have any other questions from the committee I don't know if I have a question um, I want to thank you for bringing this forward because this is an issue of, of equity and equal access to, to education and the opportunities we provide in the state. And um, having served on a board in a district that has, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 languages uh, and, and actually teaching to Tagala in the, in the district itself because of our large Filipino population, it seems that this is one that really is an issue of equity. And even if there is a cost to be borne, um, as they always say, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. And so it is more expensive to not have your degrees and not have your education and your certification than to have one. So I, I think it's out of fairness. Um, uh, I support this bill and, and ha happy that you brought it to our attention because it really is an issue that, uh, that we have to address as a state with so many languages. You know, we're not just a, a Spanish population anymore. It is just multiple languages. And oftentimes this is a, sometimes a gatekeeper for folks if, the, if they're not able to get their high school diploma and uh, if they can study for the GED and pass it. It's some level of certification. It may not have the same value as our regular high school diploma. Generally, they don't sometimes, but at least for many people, it is a step in the right direction and it's a statement of accomplishment. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Um, any, other, there, any other comments from the committee? I just have to ask a question. Um, the, the tests that are being taken in different language, let's say in Spanish, um, do you know if those are accepted at the post-secondary higher uh, uh, institutions? Again, I, I applaud the, the intent and the goal that you are trying to achieve, but I want to make sure that the tests that the students take in different language 
would be recognized and accepted when they get to higher education and institutions at our college systems. Um, if, if I may respond to that, my understanding is that it would be um, sufficient for junior colleges and community colleges. And then aside from that, there's always the employment opportunities that are enhanced uh, with a GED. Um, so those are two of the you know, very important reasons that we have to think about in terms of the, the need for this type of measure. I understand you, may, you answered the question by saying it is accepted at the community colleges, but what if the uh, students are planning on going straight into the four years? It's not. Right, so it's a pathway forward. Having been at these institutions forever look like, and, and most of the students who are not graduating from high school are not going to go to a four-year institution if they're not getting their high school diploma because applications for four-year institutions begin early and so you have to really be on track and have all the things in place. So it's not likely a student who's taking a GED is going to go to UC or CSU or any of the other institutions. Admissions to the community college is for anyone at a certain age. You don't even have to have a high school diploma to go to community college. Mm -hmm. I've had I've had students who have come to the university to get their bachelor's degrees, who spent two years, of spent the time in community college, ended up with their AA, came to San Diego State, and never had a high school diploma on their record because they didn't have one. So oftentimes it really is an issue of personal accomplishment and achievement that they want to meet, as well as goals in terms of jobs and those kinds of things. But um, anyone at a certain age can go to the community college and, and do well. And so, it, it's, it, and if you're going to go to four-year institutions, you probably are on, top, on, 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 on track to get your, your, back, your high school diploma that is going to be your entrance because of the grade point average and all those other kind of requirements for four-year institutions. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kim, did you wish to further comment? No, I would like to uh, thank Ms. Weber for the clarification there, but uh, as you mentioned uh, and you stated correctly, I think anyone who wants to go to community colleges or junior colleges, they do not need to take GED, right, because anybody can go there. So I recognize the, the intent of the legislation is to encourage and really motivate people um, to take these, uh, the high school diploma uh, equivalent test and do, do so in the language that they are comfortable. But I think uh, also the point I try to make is that uh, here in America, regardless of where we come from, I'm an immigrant myself. When I came here at a young age, I didn't speak any word of English. I had to learn it. Thankfully, I'm fluent now, I understand. But the goal and the intent is to ensure that our students who are living here, who are getting education, whether they move on to full four-year colleges right away after high school uh, or not, uh, we want them to be at least fluent and be able to speak fluent English, uh, and that will also help them whether they move on again uh, in terms of getting a, a good paying jobs or even, you know, getting a, a employment that will provide them with the opportunities that make more than certain level. Um, so I think it would be important to encourage students to be able to take those tests and be able to understand what's in the test in English because here we are in the we live in America, and English is our, I guess, first language, even though English was my second language. But uh, I just want to make sure that we encourage students to be able to have a fluency in English. While, again, I, that is not to say I don't uh, appreciate what you're doing, and I do totally understand. And, uh, but again, I just wanted to raise that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no further comment from the committee. Um, and, and just one more comment. You know, I, this is this may be a perfect policy for an imperfect world, uh, because I don't know that we're. The, I, I fear the, the 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 unintended consequences of something like this. So, but I am going to be supportive because the equity issue does override that at this point. Uh, we just want to make sure there's equity for all here too. We don't want to lock people out of the opportunity, and maybe the state needs to play a greater role in that. I don't know. That's something we can explore <laughs> down the road. Uh, but with that, I am going to be supportive. Uh, Madam Secretary, or do we have a, a, a motion? I'll, I'll second. Close. And you may close. Um, well, uh, first of all, I want to thank you, my um, Assemblymember Weber and Kim, to make those um, comments. I totally understand, but my intent is to give the opportunities for so many 
uh, people that came to this country when they didn't go to, like myself, to the K-12 system, but yet it's, they've been working. And sometimes, you know, when you're working, it's so hard to go into school and learn the language. And that's, that's my main purpose on this bill and respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due pass to appropriations. O'Donnell? Aye. O'Donnell, aye. Olson? Kim? Kim, no. McCarty? Mm -hmm. Santiago? Thurmond? Weber? Aye. Weber, aye. So it's two to one. Two to one, the bill is on call. You do have a second bill. Yes. Uh, we're going to take up your second bill now. Then we're going to go to... Uh, after that, we're going to jump ahead of some folks here and move to another. What, what is the number that we're going to go to after this one? After the 